Good afternoon and welcome to the County Commissioner District 4 Forum. The, today's forum is hosted by the Rio Rancho Regional Chamber at Rio Rancho Public Schools. Thank you, Rio Rancho Public Schools, for the use of the facility. And media today is being done by Greencastle Media. We want to welcome everyone to this forum. The format continues to be the same. It is a one-minute opening, one-minute closing. We will alternate on questions throughout as time permits. That being said, the Rio Rancho Observer is our sponsor and will be asking all the questions today. Tracy, will, uh, with the editor of the um, Observer, will be asking all the questions. I'll be moderating. With that, we flipped a coin to start out with, and Madigan Ray will kick us off, followed by Jordan Juarez. We'll uh, have his opening next. Everyone ready? Mm -hmm. On your mark, get set. Madigan, you're up first. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank the Rio Rancho Chamber and Jerry for hosting us today. My name is Madigan Ray, and I'm running in for County Commission District 4 to be a voice for people who don't typically have the luxury or privilege of getting involved in local politics. These are the folks that are struggling to make ends meet while working multiple jobs, people who want to be homeowners but are priced out by investors snatching up their 10th, 20th, 100th single family home, many of which sit vacant between short term rentals. Families trying hard to budget, not knowing if they're going to see an egregious rent hike tomorrow. Workers like those at SRMC who want to unionize to get a living wage, but are scared of retaliation or the loss of health care benefits. Veterans who are trying to put their lives back together after struggling with addiction and homelessness. Uh, retired or disabled citizens whose benefits aren't sufficient for the cost of living. My biggest priority will always be the benefit of the working class of Sandoval County. Thank you, Madigan. Jordan, your opening. Well, thank you, Jerry. Thank you to the Rio Rancho Chamber and our moderators, the Rio Rancho Observer. My name is Jordan Waters, running for Sandoval County Commission District 4. And I'm here because we are the new generation who will provide sustainability to Sandoval County and the state of New Mexico. My wife and I are raising my three-year-old son here. We want to make sure that young people stay in New Mexico. We are here to continue growth and support for our workforce and expand it in any means possible. We are here for public safety and we are here to maintain the ability to keep this county as prosperous as possible. That is what is important to me. All too often, our young people are left leaving the state to go find opportunity elsewhere. I am here to make sure that my generation stays here, works here, and continues to thrive here in this state. Thank you, Jordan. All right, Tracy, Jordan, you have the first question. Okay, this is a two-minute question, and it is on workforce. What steps can the county take to expand job opportunities and address workforce shortages in key sectors? And how do you see the county partnering with local businesses to meet these demands? Well, thank you. So workforce expansion is important. We need to make sure that the 40,000 people traveling across this river every day to Albuquerque are able to have sustainability here in Sandoval County. And in doing so, we will continue to invest in projects that help bring small businesses, veteran owned businesses, as well as higher paying wages to the county. We're gonna do that by continuing to invest in Discover Sandoval, as well as adding in incentives to show that Sandoval County has growth opportunity and potential. District four has a lot of open land and the potential for PDB, PDB to expand out into the region. With that, we have the ability to have a commerce corridor that will help sustain better paying jobs for our residents and continue to add to that growth. That is what we need to continue to do and we need to help work to add to cutting red tape. If we cut the red tape, we can continue to move forward and expand our workforce. Our workforce is what is necessary for tax revenue as well as continuing to save our county from having difficult tax revenue issues that we can address appropriately and add that revenue in to save the county money as well as give our workforce expanded opportunity. Thank you, Jordan. Madigan, same question. Tracy, can you repeat it? What steps can the county take to expand job opportunities and address workforce shortages in key sectors? And how do you see the county partnering with local businesses to meet these demands? 
Um, so I think we all know New Mexico has a brain drain problem. Uh, our college graduates are leaving and moving to other states with better pay, better benefits, better labor laws, and more job opportunities. Uh, today's workers want to live uh, close to where they work, which means that which means we need wages that meet or exceed the local cost of living. Um, they're environmentally and socially conscious, preferring to work for and spend money at places that share their values. People want to work somewhere with good schools for their kids, well-kept roads, lower crime, and access to fire and hospital services. And I'm a millennial, I've heard my whole life, you just don't want to work anymore. The fact is, workers want to work, they just want to work for what they're worth. Um, expanding our workforce means prioritizing people over profits. Uh, workers will come here or stay here if there are strong protections for workers and unions. Um, there are folks who don't have the opportunity to attend college but have years of experience in the workforce, but they're hitting what's called the paper ceiling. They're not getting jobs that they are qualified for because they don't have that degree, which is why I would encourage local businesses to, wherever possible, have equivalent experience on the job application instead of just uh, requiring a degree. Um, the other thing that nobody wants to talk about really is that workers today want to work remotely. And according to a study by Cornell University, working remotely cuts their carbon footprint by 54%. Uh, so if we can get employers that don't need their workers on site to have their employers work remotely, we can get a lot more people to come live here. Thank you, Madigan. Next question is coming right back to you. Okay, this is a one minute question and it's on elections. What can the county do to ensure fair and secure elections, and how can we promote greater civic engagement in this current political climate? So I want to give a huge shout out to our county clerk, Ann Brady Romero, who has done an absolutely incredible job with securing our elections. She has addressed and resolved all of the issues that led to a 2016 Justice Department order, and she has worked to improve the safety and security of our elections. Um, any member of the public, if you don't know this, can go to the warehouse and watch ballots being counted. Um, she's worked with the Pueblos and the chapter houses to make sure our native population have equitable access to our elections. And New Mexico has been given the distinction of having the most secure elections uh, in, the, in the country, with Sandoval County being a shining example of that. So I think we need to do more to get the word out about how great our county clerk has, has been doing here. Um, because our elections have been noted as being pretty much flawless. Thank you, Madigan. Jordan, same question. What can the county do to ensure fair and secure elections, and how can we promote greater civic engagement in this current political climate? Thank you. So our elections are one of the best in Sandoval County and that's because of great public servants as well as great civil servants who have helped maintain that ability. As well as making sure we have good relationship with the county clerk and making sure our roles are clean and fair and that US residents who can vote will be able to vote. That is what is important in making sure that is fair. It is also important that candidates run a strong campaign. It is important that once that campaign is over, that we get to work for our people. That, that is what we are here to do. We are here to serve our residents and our taxpayers with the utmost ability, regardless of party. That, that, that is what we need to do when we are done with elections. And continue to keep those roles clean and fair and make sure that our civil taxpayers have what they need to continue to watch those ballots be counted as well as maintain that ability for public transparency. Thank you, Jordan. Next question's coming right back to you, Tracy. Um, yes, this is a one minute question on um, business. Earlier this year, some businesses came forward regarding stark increases in their property value assessments and brought those forward publicly with concerns. What are your thoughts on the issue? I, I can read it, uh, sorry. Some businesses came forward this year regarding stark increases in their property value assessments as assessments and brought concerns forward publicly. What are your thoughts on the issue? Thank you. 
So we need to make sure as a county that we are assessing current taxes at a fair rate and making sure that the commissioners are overseeing the understanding that businesses are our lifeline and our lifeblood and in doing so if we make sure to maintain a fair assessment of those properties and those taxes to those businesses we are not hindering our growth and our revenue within the county okay. thank you jordan madigan same question some businesses came forward this year regarding stark increases in their property value assessments and brought concerns forward publicly what are your thoughts on the issue um, I know I was at the county commission meetings where these businesses expressed their uh, displeasure with the situation, to say the least. Um, and I, I did, I do empathize with them. I understand that these were stark increases. increases. And, um, but I also understand that we kind of fell behind during COVID. Um, Businesses were not being assessed properly. Businesses were not paying the taxes that were due, but it's because of COVID and we were all trying to help each other out. So now it's time to play catch up. And while I think that maybe we could have done it a little bit more staggered, I understand why it needed to happen. Um, but as a commissioner, I would want to do anything that I could to help alleviate that burden from uh, from businesses that were not expecting such a stark increase. Thank you, Madigan. Next question comes right back to you. Okay. This is also a one minute question and it's on infrastructure. Do you support the expansion of Paseo del Volcan to Interstate 40 and what would be your recommendations as commissioner to improve infrastructure? Um, the short answer is on paper, yes, I think that it could be a really great thing for our county, but what, what we need to acknowledge is that it would completely change the makeup of this county for better and for worse. Um, I do have serious concerns about the environmental impact on, uh, with so much added traffic and how it would affect the quality of life of people who have purchased homes out there, or properties out there, specifically to enjoy a rural existence and they might have a busy highway running through their front yard. Um, I worry about making sure that this, the vision for Sandoval County aligns with the vision for Bernalillo County, since this would be a joint venture. And I wanna be sure that Sandoval County gets its fair share of benefits from the expansion, commensurate with our investment in it. Um, I do support the expansion, but if we're gonna be bringing jobs, that means we also need to be bringing workforce housing to support the workers who will be coming for those jobs. Thank you, Madigan. Same question, Jordan. Do you support the expansion of Paseo del Volcan to Interstate 40, and what would be your recommendations as commissioner to improve infrastructure? So yes, I support the PDB expansion, because without it, it does not allow us the proper commerce that we need to expand the county's workforce, and that goes back to your first question on workforce expansion. We need to be able to have the proper roadway to be able to reach out and, and expand from 40 to 550, which gets us to I-25. In doing so, we are now providing those residents within the county, the businesses and the workforce that we need to continue to keep improving the quality of life among our residents. And so we will have to look at a lot of things, like Ms. Ray has said, including the environmental impact, but at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we're looking out for our residents first and make sure that if we're gonna have an expanded workforce and the proper use of tax dollars, we will get that going. Now, as for infrastructure concerns, we need to make sure we're doing everything fair and properly along with working with the state to make sure that everything is running smoothly in accordance within state law. Thank you, Jordan. Another question coming right back to you, Jordan. Okay, this is a one minute question and it's on healthcare. Issues have been brewing for some time between the Nurses Union and Sandoval Regional Medical Center Administration. How do you propose the issue be resolved? So, in regards to the nurses union, I know we have kept up somewhat on it, and I'm not going to try and relay an answer in which I don't have a full question for you on that. That's just not fair to anyone who, who I have. So, what I can tell you is that our health care providers deserve the right to get paid what they are doing. That is a tough job, just like our public safety and our fire. If, if the nurses need a union to be able to work and provide the proper wages to them, then 
that is something that should be seriously looked at and should have the support within the county commission. But without all the data in front of me to look at that, I want to make sure that I have the proper answer before I give anything more concrete than that. Okay. Thank you, Jordan. Madigan, same question is going to come back to you. Issues have been brewing for some time between the Nurses Union and the Sandoval Regional Medical Center Administration. How do you propose the issue be resolved? So I had the pleasure of attending a community forum last night specifically about this issue. And um, the way that the issue needs to be resolved is that the hospital needs to come to the table and bargain with the, with the nurses. That is the resolution. Um, they just want to protect the PRNs. Um, which are the nurses that show up when they, there's no one to work that shift, so they don't have standard shifts. Um, they want to be included in the union because they are the backbone of the hospital. If, if you go to the hospital, chances are you've been taken care of by a PRN, and they deserve just as much protection as regular nurses. So my resolution would be um, for the hospital administration to come to the table and give the nurses what they are worth. Thank you, Madigan. We have time for two more one minute questions. Okay. Madigan, you're up. Um, let's turn to public safety. What can the county do? It's a one minute question, as Jerry said. What can the county do to ensure the high crime rates seen in other parts of the state don't creep into Sandoval County? So um, I know 24-hour news networks and news websites um, benefit from keeping you afraid and, and alarmed, but if you look at the facts as presented to the commission by the Sandoval County Sheriff, crime in Sandoval County is down. So for me, public safety is about the other factors of public safety. Things like our fire department that rely on um, too few vehicles, understaffing, volunteer fire departments. Um, we have this fabulous new dispatch center going in to help the underserved areas of our, or of our county, but that doesn't really help if the fire department doesn't have the vehicles or personnel to get to you in a timely manner. Um, the other things that we need to look at are making sure that the detention center is setting people up for success when they leave the detention center so that they don't reoffend and end up back in there. Um, so for me, public safety is about more than just um, police. Thank you, Madigan. Same question, Jordan, Tracy. What can the county do to ensure the high crime rate seen in other parts of the state don't creep into Sandoval County? Thank you. Sandoval County is the second safest county in this state, and that is because of Rio Rancho being the safest city of its size within the state. Now, if we're going to get ourselves so first, it is through funding our sheriff's department adequately with the proper equipment and proper staffing and retention. I've had the pleasure of sitting down with the sheriff's union. I've had the pleasure of sitting down with Rio Rancho and Rio Rancho PD and fire union and the SO union along with fire county fire union. Everybody has said the same thing. It's all about proper equipment and retention. As long as we continue to do that, we can keep all of what Bernalillo County is bringing up into this county away. That, that, that's, sim that's simple. We also need to make sure that we are providing adequate communication towers up into the northern part of the county as well, so to make sure our sheriff's department and county fire have what they need to be able to respond in a timely manner as well. I think the most important thing is make sure we focus on retention, 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 and as long as we do that and have the proper personnel, we can do a good job. Thank you, Jordan. And our final question, Tracy. Okay, this is a one minute question on housing. How can the county address the affordable housing crisis and what initiatives would you focus on to ensure that housing is accessible to working Sandoval County residents? So to be able to take care of our workforce housing is to be able to expand our house availability up and down the economic ladder. If we're going to give ourselves proper workforce housing, we need to make sure that there are more than just single family homes going in there. My generation is not one to buy single family homes. We are going to look at, from what I've talked to, people around the county and people from outside of that, townhomes, condos, those type of areas are what we need to look into to expand that housing and be able to utilize our property adequately. Sandoval County District 4 has a lot of land that we can use, but we need to make sure we're using it properly. And if we're going to 
retain our younger generation who is coming straight out of college and who has some debt when they're going into this, we need to make sure that we're giving them the proper economic abilities to buy any type of house, whether that be single family, townhome, or condo. Thank you, Jordan. Madigan, the same question. How can the county address the affordable housing crisis and what initiatives would you focus on to ensure that housing is accessible to working Sandoval County residents? So if you want some truly horrifying statistics about the housing crisis and exactly how bad it is, check out the 2024 statewide housing needs assessment. Uh, only 29% of renter households can afford even the median rent. That means 70% of our renters are looking for lower rent or low income or affordable housing. And only 12% of our renters are in a position to ever buy a house. That is pretty terrible. Uh, with rent prices trending upwards faster than wages are keeping up, we're looking at entire generations of forever renters who are less engaged in their communities. Um, currently, 70% of single-family homes in New Mexico are owner-occupied, owner which is slightly above the national average, but as foreign, out-of-state, and corporate investors turn their greed here, the owner-occupied numbers will drop. So we need to curb the mass purchase of single-family homes in addition to building denser and mixed-use housing. Thank you, Madigan. All right, it's time for our closings, and Madigan, you're first. Okay. Do I get a timer for, okay, yeah, you will. excellent. You get to take that breather before it starts. <laughs> um, my platform can be summed up with this, planning instead of reacting. I believe in looking forward and taking action now to smooth the road ahead, and a great example of what I mean is something that's already a part of our lives, the Rio Rancho water system. And if you have the opportunity to twist Mayor Hull's arm into taking you on a tour of the facilities, do it, because it's fascinating. Uh, and it's incredible, and our water system is what happens when someone looks ahead and solves a problem before it becomes a crisis. Um, it's what gives us all peace of mind and allows us to sustain growth here. Uh, it's one of the reasons I felt confident about making Rio Rancho my home for the rest of my life. And my plan is all about building a strong foundation for this, for this county from the ground up, not the top down. It's about a, a happy and healthy working class that want to call Sandoval County their home as I have. My name is Madigan Ray, and I wanna be your next county commissioner for District 4. Thank you, Madigan. Jordan, you're closing as well. You got a breather here, there you go. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you to the Chamber and the Observer for hosting this and everyone coming out tonight. The choice is clear. Real New Mexicans, born and raised New Mexicans, no New Mexican problems. If we're going to solve these problems from my generation's viewpoint, that is where we need to look to to get the future forward. We need to be able to have those ideas from born and raised New Mexicans to give us what we need, not out-of-state ideas. If we're going to continue to thrive as a state, we need to continue to push forward. I want to continue to have my family live here. I want my son to have a future here. That is what I seek to achieve. That is what my wife has supported me in doing. And without her, I wouldn't have the ability to do this. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. And this concludes County Commission District 4's forum. Thank you again to Jordan Juarez and Madigan Ray. Give them a round of applause. Thank you.